My initial days at J&J, &J, and, and actually prior to joining, I had been in university and came right out of school and joined J&J. &J. There was a knowledge of Johnson & Johnson and the corporation. I can't say I was completely aware of, of a credo. I was more aware of the corporate reputation. Being exposed to our credo and, and what it helps you become is kind of an evolutionary process. I think the exposure to our credo helped guide me in decisions as you go through circumstances and situations where you, you practice what our credo says to practice. But as the decisions become larger, I think you really, you really do get affected by it. Another widely used prescription drug is being taken off the market. We also had another situation that I was directly involved in in our pharmaceutical group where we had a product called Propulsant. Approved in 1993, Propulsa attacks the condition known as gastroesophageal reflux. What Propulsa did was a, it was a life-saving drug to certain premature children, and there were other patients who just had no relief from anything else. There were many drugs that had drug interactions with, and we tried to eliminate the co-prescribing of these products, and we did that through label changes, dear doctor letters, but we never seemed to be able to fully protect the patients on the other side. But just a year after its release, Propulsive was also linked to growing reports of abnormal heart rhythms in users of the drug. Eventually, the drug was implicated in 80 deaths. We had numerous discussions about Propulsive. We did some market research and we found out that to protect our customer, the consumer, the patient, who was traveling and might get a prescription that interacted with another prescription someplace that they'd gotten someplace else where doctors didn't know about it. When I got to the point of saying, can we really protect the patient? And I think that's when we made a decision to voluntarily take the product off the market. Last week, as the FDA contemplated proposals to ban the drug or sharply restrict its use, the manufacturer, Janssen Pharmaceuticals, announced it would take the drug off the market next July. You wouldn't believe the heart-wrenching stories we got from patients and parents of patients who really needed this product. And we made it available to those patients at our expense. And I can tell you never once did we address or consider that this was a billion dollar product for Johnson & Johnson. We considered the patient and the integrity of making sure we protected the patients. We just felt it was the right thing to do. Our credo sits in every room and it's very simple. We don't need a, a whole laundry list of principles. We don't need all these, you know, management gurus sitting on top of everything. What we have is principles. You have your patients, your customers, people that use your products first. You have your employees second. You have the community that we have a responsibility to third. And we have our shareholder fourth. The thing that to me was most outstanding about Robert Wood Johnson when he wrote this was I think he was the only shareholder and he placed himself fourth. And I think it says a lot for the individual who would say, let's keep our priorities the way they should be. I'll benefit by it, but I don't wanna be compromising all these other things for my own personal gain. Now, if you translate that into Chinese or Japanese or Spanish, it all says the same thing. No matter what country you're in, you know right from wrong. When you think about trust um, and respect, it's really how the consumer views the company. And I think the credo comes to life through the character of the people that work in the corporation. It's the behavior that 100 plus thousand people at Johnson & Johnson display and the character of those individuals that, that really brings our credo to life without ever talking about our credo. Our job in this industry in healthcare is to have a focus on patients and to do what's right to bring good things to patients. The reality of it is our credo is one of the greatest competitive aspects that we have. It allows us, affords us the opportunity to get into discussions no one else can get into. It creates trust and confidence with our consumer. Maybe people think it compromises us a little bit in the day-to-day. 
sure, maybe it makes our jobs a little tougher, but that's okay. Because in the long term, it does allow us to be so much more competitive. The environment we live in today is a much more challenging environment than it's ever been before. For those of you that were at the stockholder meeting a couple years ago, there was a stockholder who got up and said, you know, it's, um, it's really interesting. You guys really just want to want to make people feel better. You don't want to look for a cure for a disease because then you won't have a business. And the response we gave to that stockholder was that, no, you're absolutely wrong. And I think you can look around this room, you can look around Johnson & Johnson, you can look at our scientific community. What we're looking for are cures. We have to continue to hold ourselves up and do what we believe is right. Now, that means we should also engage in dialogue with the legal community, the regulatory community, the government community, and stand up for what we do believe is right and fight for that. You can look at HIV AIDS in Africa, you can look at um, pricing of pharmaceutical products, you can look at clinical trials. There's a myriad of things that can be looked at. I think we're here to, to really understand how we can have an impact on HIV AIDS. I, I, you know, as, as we sat down and started to discuss it, we felt that there was something we needed to do. Currently, there are 60 million sufferers of HIV AIDS, and that includes some five and a half million children. This epidemic is projected to grow at 9% a year. I personally hope that discoveries by our colleagues at TiboTech will radically improve the treatments for people with this terrible condition. I think what you've been able to accomplish with Prezista is probably unprecedented. You know, the pharmaceutical industry gets some spears thrown at it, uh, but I think you've really brought this dream that we saw years ago to reality. There's a lot more realities to come into the future and a lot more dreams to be realized, but from both the perspective of Johnson & Johnson to say thank you and the perspective from the patients that don't get a chance to speak to you to say thank you because you do extraordinary things. After you've moved on from your current position as chairman and CEO, what do you want to have been known for? It would be just extraordinary if we could find cures for diseases. I want J&J to be known for improving health care for people around the world. And some of it may be through philanthropy and some of it may be through, you know, the business because there is a balance there. We come in to an organization like Johnson & Johnson with um, values that we've we've learned throughout our lifetime that have been instilled in us but I, I do think that that our credo helps us just become a, a better person working in an environment like this being exposed to the extraordinary people that are around Johnson and Johnson it reinforces beliefs in people it reinforces beliefs in lots of things and it helps you become I think in a way more tolerant more understanding you go through circumstances and situations where you, you practice what our credo says to practice as you live it, as you experience it, just can't help but to have a profound impact on you as a person over time.